Hey everyone, Heather Earls here. Thanks for coming on today's episode. This week, like every week, I'll be talking about natural living and healthy tips that will get you to rethink how you live and what products or habits you can easily change to better your life. So let's get started. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Urban Wisdom. Well, our topic is what to include in a nature journal or how to create one. Now, what do I mean by a nature journal? Well, for this particular post or podcast, we are not talking about writing down when you plant your garden, trees, or anything outdoors. We are discussing what you see outdoors, a scientific journal of sorts. Creating a nature journal is for all ages, as I believe there are multiple health benefits to seeing the beauty of life no matter your age. My only rule is do not make this nature journal complicated. It's meant to relax, relate, and enjoy what's all around you. So let's get into the supplies you will need. Well, the three things you truly need are a notebook, writing utensils, and your imagination. Beyond that, you can use paints, colored pencils, stencils, and or dried plants. To begin, pick out a notebook, one that you really, really love. If this is for a child, then you let them pick it out. The point is for the notebook to bring joy to the person who is using it. Next step, When you go out into nature, think of God as your teacher and the world as your classroom. With your notebook along, find something in nature, whether it be a leaf, a horse, the sky, seashells, anything. You draw a picture of it and then you write about it. Now, helpful tips on writing according to age. If this project is for kindergarten or someone a little younger, I would suggest having them draw a picture and then say something like this. Here is a bird. His name is Mr. Robin. Keep it short and non-stressful. As you get higher up in age, I would encourage a person to write something a little more in depth. For instance, you could have them draw a picture of whatever they're looking at. I'm going to choose a hummingbird. And then they write a story about it. The story may say something like this. There was a mother hummingbird who was frantically flying from house to house looking for nectar. Her little birds were hungry. Stopping at the first house, she noticed a cat sitting on the wall. Oh, this is not a good place to stop, she announced. So she flew to the next house. Up and down the sunny valley, she went looking for nectar from the various plants and flowers. So you get the idea of how you could make it a little more difficult for someone who likes to write or is a little older. For children who don't find writing enjoyable, you could have them merely draw the picture or write a simple description like, A hummingbird has blue and green wings and its beak is very long, pointy, and black. And you guys, they don't really even need to write something if you're just encouraging the kids to get outside. I have found that even the children that don't like to write like writing about nature. Remember, parents, do not correct spelling errors unless you're using this for a school project. Nothing is so devastating to a child as a parent who corrects their work when they are proud of their accomplishment and merely trying to show you Yes, there is a time for that and age comes into play, but as a parent, I would strongly suggest keeping a project like this enjoyable. Now, science DVDs. So let's move on. Since you're writing this nature journal, there is a set of DVDs that I'm going to recommend. These DVDs talk all about nature, animals, and how they have everything they need from the beginning of life to equip themselves for our world. If you have Amazon Prime, you can view them for free. I am recommending the DVDs as they are a great way to see some of what you're writing about and learning. You write in a journal for a week and then you watch one of the three DVDs, a complimentary way of reinforcing what you learn. I guarantee children and adults will learn something from these. Now you guys, these DVDs are called Incredible Creatures That Defy Evolution and there's three of them. All right, so how can science improve your outlook? Well, appreciating your surroundings takes your mind and that of your children off their limitations. The limitations of being quarantined, sick, unable to provide, and anything else that comes along in life that debilitates us in some way. Having an appreciation for nature and your surroundings gives you a positive outlook on life, which is very much needed no matter where you live. I love keeping and creating a nature journal as it's something you can always continue and look back on. 
Remembering happy times with your children, family, or when you were on your own is a treasure you can save. My children have suggested it when visiting cousins. They all share notes at the end before heading home and feel connected even though we live many hours away. Now adding special touches to your journal. I like to press flowers in my journal along with drawing and writing. So if you're an artist or painter and want to create a masterpiece, what a better canvas than the outdoors. There's no wrong or right way to write what you see and that's what I love the most about a nature journal. Each one is unique, formed of that person and their abilities. Now special notes. Notebooks don't need to be expensive. They can be from the family dollar store, a Barnes and Noble, or your child could even make their own. Again, the point is to have a notebook that the person can relate with. Now please take the time and look at what your child or tween or teen has created. If you're asking them to do something, then acknowledge that they've done it and show excitement. This will encourage them to continue in their journey to find the beauty of science, nature that's all around. Now to end, I would love to see some of your creations if you feel comfortable. So you can email them to me or post a picture in the comments on my blog section, which is just heatherearls.com slash nature journal. Now, until we meet again, you guys, stay free and have a healthy and blessed week. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Urban Wisdom and Natural Living. Tune in next week where I'll broadcast live every Monday morning at 8 a.m. If you miss it live, hold those tears and head on over to my blog, which is heatherearls.com. That's heather, E-A-R-L-E-S.com. There you can have 24-7 access or right here on iTunes. If you want to follow me on social media, you'll find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. Have a healthy week. Thank you.